In this video you will learn what is server-side rendering inside Angular and how you can implement it. And actually I must say from start, in comparison to React and server-side rendering inside React, not a lot of people are rendering Angular on server-side. But actually it is working just fine. So the first question here, what is server-side rendering and when do you need to use it? And actually server-side means that your application will be rendered on the backend. If we will check normal application, you will see that we don't have anything inside our body, we just have a brute tag, and then our Angular application, with the help of JavaScript, simply builds the whole markup inside client. Which actually means our page is fully empty when it is rendered, and then we are building the whole page with JavaScript. It has pros and cons, and the main problem is that our page won't be indexed by search engines like for example Google. Which actually means if you are writing some articles, then they won't be indexed inside your application. Additionally to that, user won't see anything on your page until the whole JavaScript will be parsed and is rendered on the page. But from my personal perspective, using server-side rendering is really a rare case. If we are talking about single-page applications, typically we are not building a website with some posts that we want to index. We are building application where a user without page reload can build quite a lot of stuff. But enough talking, let's convert now our Angular application that you can see here to our server-side rendered application. And our first step here is to install additional package. And here we must write ng add add ng universal slash express engine. And actually this command won't just add a package to our package JSON, it will also generate additional files that are needed for our server-side rendering. But the main problem here for me was that after installation like this, it got my Angular version incorrectly and installed wrong package. This is why here at the end I used add and then a version of Angular that I had inside package.json. And in this case it will install everything correctly. So let's just hit enter and proceed. So after installation we have quite a lot of changes. First of all inside our package.json we can find this package. So this is ng universal that we just installed, and additionally here on the top we have four different commands: devssr, serve, build, and prerender. First of all, here inside our source folder we have not just main ts but main server ts. Let's open it. As you can see, it is kind of similar to our main ts. We also have here enable prod mode, but after this we have two packages. First of all, app server module, which means we have a new app module, which is now used with dot server. And here we have export of render module from our platform server. Now let's look on our app, and here we have a new file, app server module, which actually means on the backend we are not using app module directly, but this module. But actually what you can see here we are using inside this app module as an import, which actually means everything that we had inside our app module will be also used here. But this is a server module which is coming from Angular platform server. And the last file that was generated, which is the most important file, is here in our root we have a file server.ts. And as you can see here, this is an express server, which will do all heavy load to render our Angular inside backend. As you can see here, quite a lot of stuff was generated. First of all, here we have some declarations, and then this import of source main server, but here on the top we are starting our server application. And the most important part in the whole code here is these three lines, server engine, where inside we are calling the function ng-express engine. And actually the main point is that inside here our server will analyze all our modules, and as you can see here this is our app server, so not app module, but app server module, and create the markup from our Angular application. So now let's try to start our application not in front-end mode, but in server-side rendering mode. And in order to do that we have this dev ssr command in our package.json, which means here I can just write yarn dev ssr and wait for it to start. As you can see here, first of all it started our backend and after this our frontend. And now we can jump to this URL to open our page just like normal Angular application. 
but actually it is different because here I can open source code and it looks differently. Here inside our app root, it is not empty. Here, first of all, we have H1 tag, Monster Lessons Academy, and now we have links to our home, private, and our users table, which actually means all these links and everything is rendered automatically server-side. And now it is even better, we can jump inside users table, and here, as you can see, we have a list of users. And actually I'm getting these users from the API. What is even more important, when we will check the source code here, it successfully rendered inside our markup the whole data from the API, which actually means it is not the initial state with empty array, it actually waited on the backend until we got our data. And the main point, we didn't make any changes inside our code, our application stayed completely the same, but it is working out of the box inside server side. So our application is working, but here directly inside console, I can see an error. Reference error local storage is not defined. Why it is happening at all? Because essential local storage does not exist inside backend on Express which actually means we can't use local storage on Express or any things which are related to the DOM. So what should we do in this case? We can jump inside our code and check the file where we have a problem. And here I have current user service with set user method and I'm just using here local storage and it was fine, but now with service side rendering it is not working. What we can do, we can inject here the platform and check if we are rendering server side or client side and then make some if conditions so our code is simply executed either only on the server or only on the client. For example, it makes a lot of sense to execute this local storage code only on the client and then we won't get an error. And in order to do that, we must inside our constructor use inject and provide inside platform ID. And here we are getting a local property platform ID, which is an object. And now here inside our constructor, we must assign this property because we want to use it across our service. This is why here let's define platform ID and this is an object. And now here inside constructor, I want to assign inside this platform ID, platform ID that we got from this injector. Now what we can do here inside set user, we can simply check if we are inside client side. And in order to do that, we have a special helper. We have is platform server and this platform browser. And here I want to use is platform browser and inside we are providing this dot platform ID. And here I'm using end, which actually means this if will be executed only if is platform browser is true. And actually here I can just console log this set current user function so you can see that it works. As you can see inside browser, we are getting set current user true, which actually means inside our frontend rendering, this property will be in true and everything will be fine. So it makes a lot of sense to write if conditions for your code that you want to execute either only on the server or on the client. And the last thing that I want to show you, which not a lot of people know, is how to reuse state from the server side to the client side, which actually means, for example, on this page, we successfully rendered this list with all these people. But actually, as you can see here inside network, we still are making this request to get a list of users. And it doesn't really make any sense because we successfully rendered all these users on the server side and now we have this data and we can reuse this data on the client side if we want to. This is why what I want to do here inside users table, I want to write this logic to reuse the state. And first of all here we must know if we are on server or on the client. This is why here we will again use inject to get here platform ID. And here we want platform ID property, which is an object. And now here let's create platform ID so we can reuse it across this component. And inside our constructor, I want to assign platform ID inside. Now that we have platform ID, we want to save our state on the server. And actually, as you can see, we have here a fetch data method, and then we're just filling the users. This is exactly what is rendered on this page. But before here, if we are on the server side, we want to store this data in the state. This is by here, let's write that if we are on the server side, so it is is platform server, 
and here inside I'm providing this platform ID, then we want to set it inside our state. And in order to do that, we must inject one more thing, which is called transfer state. So here let's add the property transfer state, and this is of type transfer state. Now here we want to call this dot transfer state, and we have here a set function. And as you can see, this is just a key value pair. So what I wanted to do, I want to write here as a key, for example, users table, and as a value here, our users. But actually we're getting several errors here. First of all, argument of type string is not assignable to parameter state key, which actually means we can't throw here this string. We really want to create a state key. And there is an additional function inside transfer state to get a state key. This is why here I will write make state key and I'm providing inside users table. Essentially, this is exactly the same, but this is the API that we are getting from it. And another thing that we are getting here, argument of type user interface array is not assignable to void, because actually inside set, we must say what we are getting back. And we are getting here user interface array. So actually these lines are setting inside the state, in the server side, these users inside this key users table. And now we don't want to do this fetch on the client if we already have data. This is why here inside engine in it, we want to check that. So if we have this data, so transfer state dot has key, and inside we are doing exactly the same stuff, make state key, here we have our users table. So if this is true, which means we already have state, then we want to read it and assign. So here inside property this dot users, I want to assign this transfer state get, and here again as a key we must use make state key users table, and here we are providing default value, this is an empty array. Which actually means if we already have state, then these three lines will do this, and else we want to fetch our data from API. And obviously we could put make state key in some additional property, but I didn't do that so you understand it better. Let's check if it's working. I will reload the page now, and let's open the source code. And we're interested here in this server state. As you can see, our server state is just a script, and you can see here our user's table data, which actually means when we're saving our data with the help of transfer state set, it simply writes this data in the script inside our page. And we're getting this data together with page, and now we can reuse them on the client. This is why here on the client, we're getting this data and we don't make a fetch request. As you can see here, no fetch request, but if you don't believe me, let's check what we're getting here. So let's write here console log users, and here is our this users, and let's check what we're getting. As you can see here, this is the list of our users, which means we are reading them from this transfer state and not through fetching data. So as you can see, Angular Service Aid rendering works fine and this is a stable solution. But I see a huge problem inside. This is really a high level code, so you can't really understand what is going inside like you can for example with React. From React you are just getting a single method rendered to string and this is it. All this stuff you can build additionally if you want to, or you can use some framework like for example Next.js, which is super popular in React world. We don't have something similar inside Angular, simply because the complexity of server-side rendering is too big and a lot of things are done under the hood. And actually, if you are interested to know how reactive forms are working inside Angular, make sure to check this video also.